monsoons this is one of the most important forms of rainfall or precipitation that is occurring in our country and uh, actually speaking we have got three forms of rainfall convectional rainfall orographic rainfall and monsoon pattern of rainfall so convectional rainfalls are generally seen during summer months wherein by the pro process of heat transfer that is convection in so convection is the process of heat transfer wherein actual molecules move so in this process during summer months what happens is the land gets heated up and the air moves to the top layers and uh, once if it expands on its travel to the top layers so uh, there is a point of condensation a dew point is being reached and rainfall falls on the surface of the land so convection rainfalls rainfalls are uh, usually seen during afternoon periods of the day so it is very common to observe convection rainfall from 3 pm to 5 pm in many of the big cities of hyderabad or even new delhi etc so the quantity of the convection rainfall depends upon the atmospheric humidity that is existing at that point similarly orographic rainfalls are the other forms of rainfall wherein the concept is very similar except that the force of energy for the movement of the air to the top layers that is for the movement of the air currents is through an obstruction by any mountain or any hillock etc so that is uh, the concept of orographic rainfall these two rainfalls contributes not more than 20 to 25 percentage of the total precipitation of the country but majority of the precipitation of the country is being received in the form of monsoons so monsoons are nothing but these are almost seasonal winds we can call it so are periodic winds so we already have the concept of sea breeze and land breeze where the air is, air will be moving from surface of the land to the sea and sea to that of the land so when we scale up the concept of sea breeze and land breeze we can understand the concept of monsoons so monsoons have come to the two reasons one is after march 21st so when the inclination of the earth is towards the top the its northern part to the sun so the entire land mass of northern part of the globe including india and the indian subcontinent which is attached to the part of asia so the provinces of tibet china the entire land mass gets heated up so low pressure has been developed in the months of april may june etc and the quantity of the low pressure will be increasing so naturally due to low pressure and these low pressures have even developed even at higher altitudes so alt higher altitudes even close to that of the st stratosphere so that it has been estimated that the atmospheric pressure will be around 500 to 600 millibars itself so such is the low pressure and virtually to compensate this low pressure winds start to move from that of the southernmost part of this land mass so in the southernmost part of the land mass we have got the indian ocean so and, and to the south we have got that is be, be, behind the equator there is also indian ocean and uh, naturally these places are with the cold air and very fortunately as the air moves the as the cold air moves and to the la land mass and uh, since they are moving on that of the water bodies of indian ocean and also bay of bengal which is to the right of our country india and arabian sea to the left of us so they carry large quantities of the moisture so these winds are moist laden humid winds we can call it moist laden humid winds and they travel to the north of the asian continent asian country so and we should understand one concept we have already a concept of trade winds which are already moving from that of the horse latitude that is 30 degrees north to that of the equator these trade winds are also called as tropical easterlies we call that is the winds are moving from eastern direction they are coming from the eastern direction and actually there there is there is a reversal of this winds also due to cause due to the disturbance in the heat or disturbance in the atmospheric pressure so due to this particular reason the word monsoon has come monsoon is seasonal winds are the reversal of the winds so these trade winds they reverse their direction also so if there there if there are no trade winds imagine that if there are no trade winds and the entire air should move continuously from that of the southern part of the india to the entire northern part and there will not be any obstruction and there will not be any showers on this land mass 
but fortunately since there are straight winds are there they are making an obstruction for this normal movement of the air and that is one of the reasons why we get large amount of precipitation on this land mass. So, the extent of precipitation will be ranging from 1100 mm to almost 3000 mm based on the geography of our country. So, this is the basic concept of the southwest monsoons and the name southwest monsoons have come due to the reason that the direction of the winds, these seasonal winds are coming from southernmost part of the south, south and western part of the country. When we see this, so, so we get the winds from south and west. So, here we have got Arabian Sea, here we have got Bay of Bengal and we have got Indian Ocean. So, our land mass is entirely in the northern part of the equator. So, we get the winds moving in this direction. So, these winds. So, actually the trade winds will be coming in the opposite direction. The trade winds are tropical easterlies will be in the opposite direction, but the reversal of the winds has occurred due to the reason of the differential heating of the earth. So, the entire land mass is getting heated from the month of May 21st onwards to that of the September 21st, but virtually more amount of heat is being received up to June 21st, which is also the day of summer solstice, the maximum amount of solar radiation that is being received uh, on the northern hemisphere. And after September 21st, what is happening is, so the earth is inclined in such a fashion that the other part of the globe, that is the southern part behind the equator gets heated up after September 21st. And anyway, you should remember one concept that is called as thermal lagging, thermal lagging. So, the thermal lagging will be extending from 25 to 30 days. That is, it is the thermal lagging, uh, what I mean to explain to you is, after September 21st, even though the southern parts of the globe gets solar radiation, but still the northern parts are retaining the heat. The retention of the heat will be for around 25 to 30 days. That we call it as a thermal lagging. So, since it is of large extent of geographical area, the thermal lagging will be supposed to be around 25 to 30 days. So, after September 21st, even though the southern parts are getting exposed, but since I have told you that it is around 25 to 30 days, so around October 28th to November 1st fortnight, the entire surface of the Indian Ocean and extremes of the Bay of Bengal gets heated up. So, virtually the atmospheric pressure is lower from the tro entire tropospheric layers that is the bottom layers to that of the almost the, the top layers. So, this po portion is also having a very particular phenomena of so convergence of the winds from the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere that is at the equator. So, this we call the intertropical convergent zone also we call that. So, here most of the time the, uh, at, at this place intertropical convergent zone most of the times of the year the winds will be almost silent in nature and that is also one of the reasons why we call this particular land mass as a doldrums. We should have heard that important terminal doldrums that is almost 5 degrees to the either side of the equator we call doldrums because it is almost a calm wind because, because it, the winds of the two directions are deflecting each other and there is no much displacement of the wind that we call it as a doldrums. So, this particular phenomenon also occurring. So, what is happening is after September 21st and the month of October and November the entire landmass or the southern hemisphere gets heated up and low pressure is being built up on the Indian Ocean. So, whereas the land mass of entire Tibet, China and northern part of India, so we have got a high pressure due to radi the entire energy of the earth has been emitted or radiated back. So, normally the air close to the earth surface is of heavy in nature, the atmospheric pressure will be of normal atmospheric pressure around 10-13 millibars. So, th this is a normal atmospheric pressure, whereas the atmospheric pressure on the Indian Ocean will be around 500-600 millibars at a higher altitudes, or, but lower altitude it will be around minus 10 to minus 20 millibars compared to that of the atmospheric pressure that is existing in the other side of the earth surface. So, to compensate this atmospheric pressure, winds start moving from that of the northern hemisphere to that of the southern hemisphere and the, since the direction of the winds are from the north east, we call it as northeast winds, northeast winds and since 
they also precipitate give precipitation we call the northeast monsoons but however what is happening is so most of the water the winds that will be carried will be passing on the bay of bengal and the winds which are coming on the from the tibet to the northern india are only dry winds they bring large amount of cold waves and certain times we even find cold injury because the winds does not have so much amount of humidity in order to lead to a process of condensation and precipitation so the since the winds are of heavy in nature with regard to that of the density they are heavy in nature but with regard to that of the moisture they does not have much amount adequate amount of moisture in order to convert into the process of precipitation so we get cold and dry winds in the northern part however this particular portion of the india mainly the south east parts of the india where the winds travel on the surface of bay of bengal may pick up such amount of humidity and since the winds the dry winds on the travel on bay of bengal pick up such amount of humidity it leads to that of the certain quantity of the precipitation on tamil nadu so that is one of the reasons why we will be telling almost 60 percentage of the rainfall of tamil nadu and one zone of andhra pradesh southern zone of andhra pradesh receives considerable amount of the rainfall from northeast monsoons whereas the rest of the country does not receive any amount of rainfall that is also one of the reasons why even though we classify monsoons into two types southwest monsoons and northeast monsoons but conventionally and we should tell that monsoon time is only of southwest monsoon so the monsoon period of india will be confined to that of only four months period of june july august september these are the four months period where monsoons are being confined whereas the other period of october november december even though it is it may be a period of northeast monsoon but since it is not giving any precipitation it is not of much economical importance to our country except the part of tamil nadu and southern zone of andhra pradesh that is also one of the reasons why the classification that has been given by imd with regard to the seasons in india so seasons in india have been classified into four types that is monsoon period post monsoon period so monsoon period is from june july august september four months post monsoon period is from october november december three months and winter season confining to january february and summer march april may so winter is of two months and summer is of that way imd has also classified the country has given the classification for seasons agriculture season has four seasons their monsoon period is being monsoon period is confined to only four months so these are the two types of monsoon that are existing in india and uh, this monsoon is of most important in india so it has got great economical value in india because almost 70 percentage of the precipitation of the country is confined to these four months alone so out of the rest of 30 percentage precipitation i already told you that around 15 to 20 percentage will be contributed by that of the conventional rainfalls and orographic rainfalls confining to that of the summer months whereas the small quantity of the rainfall around 10 to 13 percent 14 percent will be confined to northeast monsoons totally on an average the countries receive 1190 mm of rainfall on an average so dec decennial averages but out of this 1190 mm 70 percentage is being received only in the month of southwest monsoons or in the monsoon period so that is one of the reasons why monsoons are going to play important role so uh, the, the other thing is so with regard to that of the irrigation availability the country is having only 42 percentage of the area under irrigation almost rest of the 58 percentage even today is under rain fed conditions where the crops are being raised in the months of monsoon period of june july august september so of the 58 percentage this contributes to around 42 percentage of the total production because it, the production is low in rain fed areas but still it is of more economical more economical reasons for the country and rather than that the other thing is monsoons are going to dictate the economy of the country also so if the country's monsoons are good in nature the economy is good in nature otherwise because most of the even when we take the any uh, consumer price index the food products alone accounts for 50 percentage of the consumer price index of the country and in spite of the reduction of the share of the gdp of agriculture in the country's economy even today 15 percentage of the gdp is being contributed from agriculture so our prime minister is aiming for 
5 trillion economy by 2024 and you can imagine so we we want to maintain the share of 15 percentage in the same economy because even today when we see the exports that are going from the country so the diversity is coming only from the agriculture produce so one very clear indication is if the monsoons are good in nature the price the economy will be good in nature and that can be very well gauged in terms of the price index we have got in the country in terms of the share market etc if one is interested you can verify that so how the, they are related correlated to that of the aspects of the monsoons so they provide direct employment so in terms of economy i already told you it accounts for only 15 percentage but in terms of the employment generation 50 percentage of the employment comes from agriculture alone so if the monsoons are good in nature there is a good employment and virtually it is very good for the country and monsoons for countries such as India, they are very much vital because we have got very less amount of sources of the water and it is always required to rejuvenate the underground sources that can be occurred only through monsoons. So, we have got a large number of projects and monsoons are the only source of rainfall, especially in South India except certain rivers of North India where they have got a perennial flow from the melting of the glaciers, etc. So, these are the important things with regard to that of the monsoon. Similarly, there is one more important aspect that is which is being also dictated by the monsoon, the length of the growing season of the crop. So, length of the growing season is the time period that is available for the crop to be raised in the locality. So, many parameters influence the length of the growing season that is availability of the natural input resources dictate the length of the growing season of the crop. If you want to raise a crop which is convenient comfortably for 365 days, the environment of the locality should be suitable for cultivation of the crops for 365 days. So, very fortunately for countries such as India, we have got the uh, facilities wherein we can raise the crop comfortably for 365 days. But under monsoon period, it is not like that because many times the rainfall is being confined only for a maximum period of 4 months. So, even with the residual soil moisture which may extend for about 15 to 20 days, we may have to confine ourselves for raising of the crops to 140 to 150 days. So, length of the growing season is dictated by parameters such as temperature, availability of temperature. For example, in the case of temperate regions, for our understanding, the length of the growing season will be between the time period between the last date of fall of the snow. Uh, in the spring season. So, to that of the first date of the fall of the snow in the case of autumn season that is so from the month of March to that of the autumn when they start around November this is the length of the growing season. So, if you take any uh, uh, crop of such as wheat in North India the length of the growing season will be confined only to around 130 to 140 days the time period that is available for the cardinal limits of the cardinal temperature limits of the crop. Likewise, rainfall is also one parameter which is dictating the length of the growing season. So, monsoons if the monsoons are well distributed in nature and the length of the growing season will be adequate in nature otherwise the crop will be subjected to deficient amount of moisture. And uh, with regard to that of the characteristics of the monsoons in India, the monsoons are uh, generally said to be pulsative in nature. So, this one we should remember pulsative that is the monsoon sir, the rainfall is not continuous in nature. So, it is it exists for a period of time then it uh, there will not be rainfall again it falls it, it is like a pulsative movements of our dry to track how it will be moving. So, the rainfall will be in pulsative in nature will be calling. So, that is one aspect and the rainy days are also not continuous in nature there are also dry spells technically a dry spell is one wherein there is no rainfall for a period of 15 days we call it as a dry spell. So, this is also one which is uh, determining the quality of the monsoons also. So, we are more concerned about the quality of the monsoons. The onset of the monsoon is more important. Normally, the onset is the time period of the starting of the monsoons. It first touches the Kerala coast around 25th of May and in Andhra Pradesh it is expected to be around June 7th. So, it prolongs to likewise to that of the North India around June 20 we expect that the entire country receives monsoons. So, it has distributed well to the country that way we give in a forecast of the meteorology. So, around June 20 like that. So, that way monsoons will be moving from southern part to that of the northern part. So, the onset of the monsoons is most important 
the dry spells that are occurring is also going to determine the quality of the monsoons the withdrawal of the monsoons are also more important certain times the monsoons withdraw very quickly so certain times many many times it extends up to october 31st i already have told you that there is a thermal lagging of around 25 days to one month so by considering the thermal lagging the monsoons may extend up to october 21st but suddenly say, there are instances wherein the monsoons have concluded around 31st of september itself so the length of the growing season will be reduced and virtually the last phases of the crop terminal phases of the crop will be subjected to drought so the productivity of the crops will be affected that way the quality of the monsoons is also one of the most important thing to be understood so these are certain aspects related to that of the monsoons of the country and its economical impact on the country and the phenomena of the monsoons thank you